we had a chance to meet up with Tony Rumar of Tromix Lead Delivery Systems at his workshop just outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tony's been building firearms since 1999 and has a reputation of building exotic and custom firearms. And in 2005, uh, at the request of one of his customers, he started looking at the Sega rifles and shotguns and doing some custom work with them. Over the years, he then developed and then perfected a few custom conversions to Sega rifles and shotguns. In fact, he's booked a couple years into the future, which is an indication of just how sought after his firearms are. Tony took the time to let us visit him at his workshop, turn on our cameras, and do a quick interview. So here's some footage from that visit. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Tony, and uh, appreciate you letting us come by and take a tour of the shop. Sure. You, um, you do obviously some uh, custom work, <laughs> like this uh, setup you're making for somebody so they can go uh, hunting. But uh, mostly you do Sega 12 conversions. Yeah, just Sega 12 conversions. You can see here on the table, these are ones that are been finished. They've been uh, initially sandblasted. They'll get a second sandblasting right before they go in for paint. Okay. And then uh, they'll be assembled. And this is not only your building these, but this is your design. You, you did all the testing and came yeah. up with these. Yeah, the testing was all done in uh, 2005. Uh, actually, we started in 2004, but most of it was done in 2005, where we started off with a long barrel and slowly moved the gas system back and slowly moved the barrel back and played with that uh, ratio of barrel length to gas port until we got the thing to work. Well, it's uh, not so simple as just cutting a barrel off. I get them quite often where someone has just cut the barrel off and it doesn't run anymore. Right. And then they send it to me and I fix it for them. Now, first thing is they're all stripped down and uh, I've got the customer's uh, build list, his build spec, right here, which came off the computer when they initially ordered, and then we go over it uh, in case there's any changes. And now it's uh, it, it's ready to uh, get the gas block back reinstalled, the gas uh, uh, tube back on, and then the holes will be welded up, the back end will be uh, fixed up, trigger guard, and uh, safety stops, and then uh, bolt tuned up, and a bunch of other little stuff. There's about six or eight options on the website. Mm -hmm. You can pick any of those, but if you just want the Tromix pistol grip and trigger, well, I can do that too. Sure. I do yeah. one at a time. There'll be one gun, will be done, and then sandblasted. It goes on the table, and then after I get about six or eight, and then uh, paint eight or so. So they do kind of go out in batches, but they get built one at a time. What would you say is the most popular type of conversion? Because not all, we talk about the short barrel shotguns, which require the NFA yeah. paperwork stuff, but not everybody does that. No, but you can see how many do. If you look at yeah. the table, <laughs> how many long ones do you see? Exactly. <laughs> so it's mostly the SPSs. It's almost right? all SPSs. Okay. Uh, there's a few. This is going to be a long one, um, but I probably do about 90% short barrels. So about nine to one ratio build short barrels to long. Yep. And, uh, you know, you can see all the little welds here there. To be honest with you, if I'm having a bad day or something, I just crank it up on my bike. Very popular. Uh, we have them in both uh, polymer, which is that one, which is very light. Oh, yeah. And then we have them in solid billet machine aluminum. Okay. And they're powder coated. Uh, they're, oh. quite, they're quite a bit heavier. Now, uh, what I like about them is when they fold, they're, they're flat to the firearm, but yeah. they're also just enough relief there that you can leave your side plate on and yeah. use your optics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's designed to go around that optic uh, mount and fold it flush. Because with, uh, at least before it's an NFA item, you've got to worry about 922R, so that gives you a nice solid U.S. part for that, too. Sure. This is an early one I built a long time ago. Uh, came in for a little work, the owner changed the top cover and to, to put his sight on it. The top cover doesn't have the, uh, there's a guide shim that's installed uh, to keep the bolt carrier down, and it doesn't have it, so he sent it back to have that put in. But uh, it's an early one with the uh, custom bayonet lugs. We used to make bayonet lugs for the Sega 12. Uh, yeah, it's got a poly choke, EOTech, and uh, now is this uh, 
762 or is this a shotgun? This is 12 gauge. Oh. This is probably a exact 762. So with the bayonet lug, was that for looks or did you guys make a bayonet with a big ring? No, it was just for looks. Okay. <laughs> we just had the customers that asked for it. So. Well, now that I know they exist, I'm going to be asking. I'm a bayonet nut, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> made a few, but I'm sure if you wanted to, you could modify a bayonet. To oh, I will. Now that I know it's, I didn't even think about it, but yeah, definitely. If you don't have a muzzle device, just have a straight barrel, all, right. all you have to do is open up the, ring. the M16 bayonet, just a hair, and it'll go over the barrel. Oh, okay. But most guys have a, a muzzle device yeah. uh, of some type, and it won't go over the muzzle device because it's so much bigger. Yeah, kind of big. So, um, which is uh, 1300, uh, yeah, 1300 uh, feet per second, ounce and an eighth, or 1351 ounce. Those cycle the Segas every time. So, if a customer wants cheap ammo that's going to work every time, that's, that's what they need to get. Because the 12-inch guns, the uh, carrier stays just inside the tube. Right. And that was my original design because I didn't think that with the uh, carrier coming out, it would go back yeah, in. Yeah, it has to be guided back yeah. into the gas tube. And so. there's a guide that I put on the, on the top cover to guide it back into that uh, gas tube. And... Uh, it worked, you know, when I tried the first one, it worked. I wasn't just, I just wasn't sure whether or not it would make it back through the hole. And again, that's not something that you could just take a hacksaw to or read a book. You have to go yeah, through yeah, many, many, how many uh, variations do you think you went through getting the small ones to work like that? Uh, oh, geez, I don't know. Probably, I probably made about 10 trips to the range. Uh, in many of the trips, I was cutting the barrel back a little at a time. Yeah. Uh, and changing shells up as I cut it back. And then I'd move the gas block a little bit, and then I'd cut it a little more and keep playing with it. And then at that point, you're down into the neck of the piston too, so now you're moving the piston or the head yeah, of the piston and changing no, the shape. There is no piston. It's just bolt carrier directly impinging on the uh, But there's enough pressure, in other words, then in that gas block, I suppose. It's not even in the tube. It's in the block, <laughs> and then it blows it out. Yeah. So, uh, and there's a little puck in here that blows the back. Oh, okay. So, but uh, I got it to work. So, but now, you know, other guns must do them. Of course, they just cock it. They know that they, they can cut the barrel to eight inches. Yeah. <laughs> they know that you can bring the gas port back to this position and it's going to work. So they don't have to do all that. Yeah. They just copy it. <laughs> Well, that's why we wanted to make sure to give credit where credit's due. Obviously, the people that put in the work are the ones that, uh, you know, are the innovators. Everybody else is just <laughs> copying, really. Yeah, exactly. uh, trigger relocation. Uh -huh. So if you do, do you also do, on the basics, do you adjust the gas port hole? Yeah. Okay, so. The gas block is removed on yes. every single gun yeah. uh, to check the gas ports and adjust them. <clears throat> And these are the full length standard barrels then? They yeah, they're 19 inch. Actually, this one's 19. This one, uh, the customer sent it in, it was 22 inches. And oh, I really? cut it to 18 and re-threaded it. So it's about 18 and a quarter or something like okay. that. You won't do the saw? I always use the saw unless the customer supplies the grip. Oh, okay. Uh, if the customer supplies the grip, I'll put on whichever grip they want. The, I don't really recommend that because there's a critical distance between here and the trigger that right. has to be maintained. And the way the Tromex trigger guard works and where it's welded into position, it makes the distance using the saw grip perfect to right. the trigger. If you swap in a different grip, sometimes you end up bunched too close to the trigger yeah. or you end up with your hand too far back. Yeah, it's just about right. So, uh, you, most guys like it where it's at. Model S17, that's an 8 inch barrel. Actually, it was the uh, very end of 2004. I had a good customer of mine uh, send me one, and he asked me to make it into a short barrel shotgun, and he wanted it as short as possible. And I wasn't sure I could get it to work. It, I hadn't seen one that was cut off short that would run uh, light shells, and uh, I just didn't know. And my answer was, well, I'll give it a shot, and if it doesn't work, we're going to pitch it in the trash can, 
Uh, back then they were $200. Right, right. And, uh, and if it does work, then you'll have a nice gun. And so uh, I started playing around with it and uh, I got it to work and a lot of other people liked it. And yeah. I uh, just went, went off from there. So right now you're, you're actually um, probably one of the most uh, desirable conversions that there is out there because it's the best quality. And you're actually backed up for like about three years now? Yeah, well, three years. the next time we take orders will be uh, uh, the first part of the uh, year 2015. Okay, so, so very, uh, very desirable. And thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he'll you know, rest his elbow here and then have his gun right. there and then he can whip it around. Very it's pretty cool. Impressive. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.